Jayberg Mechanical of Salk Rapids, Minnesota started the Jayberg Learning Program with the local high school to find that next generation of plumber. We're going to meet some of those high school students and their teacher and mentor, Mr. Jacob Masters. I'm Craig Morgan, and this is American Plumber Stories. Some days I'm working before the sun kisses the sky. I watch the world wake up from the seat of my truck. I'm out here earning my piece of the pie. A good, honest buck. No, it ain't. We've got the faucet in place, done. Next thing we're gonna do is hook up our supply tubes, hot and cold. When you're doing hot and cold on a faucet, what side is the cold always on? Cold is always on the left. No. Left, right. right, what is it? Can I go? Ryan Gordon and I am a, oh. I am Ryan Gordon and I am a future American plumber. The only difference between the plumber and the doctor is the plumber washes his hands after he's done working and the doctor washes his before he goes to work. So. <laughs> Let your hands do the work. You don't even need to see what's going on down there. It's that simple. Um, when I got done with high school, I was done. I did not want to go on to any more school. Parents um, sometimes have misconceptions as far as that my student has to go to a four-year school to be successful. And that's just not the case. When my partner, uh, Kurt, and I first started, we each threw $5,000 in, in the checking account and away we went. And we knew we had to get to a certain level. I don't know, probably after two years, we probably had, I don't know, a dozen guys working maybe or something. And uh, we felt pretty good about that at the time, so. We've done good for a bunch of 12th graders. Uh, my dad was the town plumber in, in a small farm town in southern Minnesota. There was five of us boys. We had no choice but to learn the trade. You know, when I was in high school, I was putting in water heaters and water softeners and cleaning sewers and the basic residential service type stuff. Then the excitement was about when we got our driver's license at 16 years old because then he could send us out uh, doing uh, some stuff on our own, you know. Myself, I'm a hands-on kind of guy, and I, I, I just think these kids nowadays aren't getting a fair shake sometimes as far as being exposed to some of it. Wait, so this... This is right, that goes in from the top. When I got into working for the contractors, production, multi-unit stuff is what really got me going then, because I just love the production part of it, so uh, I never woke up and didn't want to go to work. Yeah, I still have that passion today. For me, the, the excitement uh, today is watching young people catch on uh, and see that same fire get lit and where they want to find a better way to do things. And, and young people do that. The conception of what I think America thinks what a plumber is is dramatically different than reality. If anybody could do it, everybody would do it. Ever since now, been working with y'all, you've been hiring, it seems like. So I don't know if it's obviously been growing, but it's possibly a struggle to find people too, I would imagine. It's one thing to say, hey, I can't find any help, but it's now starting to be a serious issue for across the country. So finding the next generation of plumbers is really hard right now in today's market. Trying to get interest in the trades. Having this class in high school was really good for me. I got interested in the trade, part of Jaybird, and took the next step. Um, I've been around Jaybird now for 27 years. Uh, I started back in 1998. I've worked uh, at Jaybird since uh, 1996. I started working for Jaybird 19 years ago. Uh, just thought about it when I was in high school and then after that started with Jaybird and been there since. Pay was always good, good work environment, couldn't complain about anything. So a couple years ago at Jaybird we were having issues um, recruiting talent to come into the trades. We reached out to the local high schools to see what we could do to get students interested um, and they suggested that we come up with something that we could bring into the schools to get some hands-on experiences for the students. 
put together a trailer. We've got some hands-on experiences we were bringing to these classes. Uh, it's worked out really good. I think it's opened the doors for a lot of these students to see what some of the trades are all about that uh, don't typically get a lot of time in the high school. Anyone have any idea what the significance of this trap is? It's gonna actually keep the sewer gas from coming up through this drain. P-Trap's got a lot of parts. We're seeing some of those students now, a couple years later, coming into the trades. Um, we get them started into the plumbing field, get them going, they get to earn why they learn. Um, it's a great experience for both them and for us. For someone that's been doing this a while, guys, you don't realize how simple this stuff really is. Back when I first started doing this, I would have had to have at least a handful of tools to get everything done that I just did with my bare hands. You want to keep a hand on the top too, just to kind of hold it steady. So one hand on top, the other hand slipping those gaskets on from the bottom. Having this class in high school was, a, was really good for me because it showed me abilities that there is to do around in the shop and achieve your, achieve your goals. What's amazing about this program is they're not just teaching and mentoring, they're providing that next generation of plumbers a job. Oh my God, there's no limits or no end to the opportunity. We see 19, 20 year old young men that come in here, we train them from scratch and, we, and they're smart, they're focused. So I was a plumber in the field for about two and a half years before I had the opportunity to move in the office within Jaber Mechanical and uh, start doing some of the purchasing. Their, their path to be on a journeyman plumber and then they start running their own jobs, you know, and some of these young guys are managing a million dollar projects and better, you know, and, and they're not very old. Really enjoyed those those early days at Jaybird because you just were constantly learning. Four years after uh, starting at Jaybird, and I became a journeyman plumber. Um, I'll never forget uh, taking that test and passing that test, and and knowing that I'll have this journeyman card for the rest of my life, and and just what that meant to me. There's there's just so much opportunity for young people. The um, six-month apprentice, he learns from the, the one-year apprentice, and the one-year guy learns from the two-year guy, and it, it's, it's pretty natural. Uh, there's no substitute in my mind for on-the-job training. If you don't want to go to school, I mean, when I got out of high school, I didn't want to go to school for four years. That's partially why I joined the Army. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't want to rack up a bunch of student debt. started here at Jaybird, and I was just learning the, learning the ways of plumbing, and. And then uh, the guy who was soldering, he got done with school and he went out in the field. So they taught me how to solder. And Where do you want to go next after you do this? Is there another career path? Uh, no, I whatever Jaber needs me to do. I'm, I'm up in the office one day a week. I enter material sheets. I mean, it's kind of an ever evolving thing. It's one of those trades that are never going to go away. A very fulfilling job and kind of fits for me. So we have a current student, Ryan, who is working with us after hours, after school hours in our warehouse. He's working in our tin shop right now while he's waiting to graduate and then pursue a, a career in the trades. So some like Ryan that are really finding a home and finding a career, whereas a month ago, this would never have happened. And he was signed up to go to a program that he didn't even know if he wanted to be in. The American dream is to go and start your own business. Well, we, you're constantly losing your best people that, that want to go out and better themselves. So we made an opportunity for them to uh, realize that dream right here by giving them a path to ownership. That's the only way that we've been able to grow this thing to this level. And so what we're going to do is kind of highlight this trade kind of tear down some of the negative perceptions and build it up in a positive role. So we try to encourage the youth to get in this in this trade. So what I see what Fister is, is doing to help contractors uh, recruit smart young people to the trade uh, is, is pretty huge because it doesn't do much good for Fister to have a, a great line of products and faucets uh, if, if, we, if we can't you know, get enough people to install them. It's been a good career for you, good job, yep. security. Very good. If college is not for them, well, get into the trades. I mean, when I got out of high school, I didn't want to go to school for four years. I didn't want to rack up a bunch of student debt. Being a plumber, you're great pay, great benefits. I mean, every company out there is competing. Pins on the, on the map here are jobs uh, 
that we've done. Upper Midwest is definitely uh, where we like to focus. Iowa, Minnesota, Dakotas, Nebraska. We are working in Colorado and Montana right now and it's actually pretty fun for uh, a new guy that comes to work here to get the opportunity to go to Denver, Colorado for uh, a few weeks at a time and, and then come back and to his home and his family and, uh, and then go back out and work again. So, see the world. Yeah. I just look at our employee owners, our employees, our field guys, our office people, the opportunity that they've had to earn a damn good living. I've done my job. I'm Dave Burdan, and I'm an American plumber. Vister has partnered with the National Housing Endowment to support the Skilled Labor Fund. You can go to AmericanPlumberStories.com to learn how you can apply for scholarships and help support the fund.